following is a paid program. The opinions expressed are not necessarily those of WNBU and Interbanks Media. Money. Welcome to All Things Money with David Blaine, a thoughtful and revealing discussion of actionable ideas and effective strategies to help you through the complex world of investing, taxes, and real estate. Now, with All Things Money, here's David Blaine. Hello and welcome to All Things Money. I'm your host, David Blaine. Thanks for joining us today on 94.1 FM WNBU, as well as Cable TV 10 in New Bern. We've got uh, Bob Register working the engineering for us today. We thank him for all his great work. Um, some of you may be listening on the internet, streaming us uh, to your iPod or MP3 player or watching the videos. We welcome you as well from dlblaine.com. As always, we like to hear from our viewers and listeners. We get a lot of our ideas for the show. Uh, we like to know what, what are, what's on your mind, so please Give us a ring. The phone number is 252-633-0107. You can also email us here at the show, allthingsmoney at dlblaine.com. And, of course, you can contact us through the website as well. Uh, so we'll start off today with a little bit of news from the um, for people in North Carolina. If you're not in North Carolina, we hopefully still listen, maybe learn a little bit. But North Carolina... The governor, Senate, and House reached a, a deal on tax reform on, I think it was announced July the 15th. They're going to change some things in North Carolina. I thought I would start off just giving a few highlights of that change. Um, as I was researching the article or the topic and looking at it, I came across some liberal websites. And, you know, it's just amazing how you can't even accomplish anything uh, today you know, this tax reform, of course, the, it's so polarizing. One side is, oh, it's, you know, for the wealthy and it's going to hurt all the poor people and all the Congress and Senate are evil and the governor. And, of course, the Republicans have only been in power for, you know, like two years and Democrats have had it since the 1800s. And it's just, it's very bothersome that you can't even attempt to lower the citizens' tax rates in the state without people going berserk on each other. It's just, it's kind of ridiculous. And as you go through here, you'll see there are some good things, uh, some bad things. I personally would like them to abolish the whole income tax. Unfortunately, they didn't get that done. Um, but anyway, so some of the highlights of it are um, lower income tax rates for all taxpayers in 2014 to 5.8%. Of course, the top bracket now is 7.75%, but this is a lowering of tax for everyone. Uh, the corporate tax rate will reduce to 6% in 2014, and in future years, it will continue to drop based on some revenue targets that the state has. And um, some other provision of it um, reduces the three-steered income tax, as I said, uh, from a minimum rate of 6 to 5.8 percent and 5.75 percent in 2015. It increases the standard deduction for all taxpayers uh, applied to the first 15,000 for married filing joint, retains the state child tax credit and increases it for families making less than $40,000, offers a $20,000 combined deduction for mortgage interest and property taxes, makes charitable deductions fully taxable and pro continues to protect Social Security income from state taxes. As I mentioned, the corporate income tax goes from 6.9 to 6 and then to 5 in 2015. A couple other things, it caps the state gas tax, gas tax, excuse me, it eliminates the North Carolina death tax and it preserves the sales tax refund for nonprofits. So those are some highlights of it. We'll cover it in more detail um, on a further show, but you know, it's not what uh, maybe more fiscally conservative people were hoping for, but it does accomplish some things, and I think there are some things in there for all uh, socioeconomic levels, which is what we need. I mean, North Carolina has the fifth highest unemployment rate in the country, uh, and we, we need to do some th something to get things going. Okay, uh, back to the investing world. We'll talk a little bit about what happened in the second quarter. I know a lot of people 
have been uh, concerned, the, the, the internet and you know, all over the place, people are concerned about interest rates and what's going on. We've talked a lot about that in, in a couple of shows already, but we'll continue to talk about that, what happened in the second quarter. Um, you know, the one thing, analogy that I used in my second quarter summary is that, you know, we're, we live here in coastal North Carolina, a lot of sailors, people a lot of, do a lot of sailing. So used a sailing analogy is, you know, once you trim the sails correctly, you only need a really a light touch on the tiller to get, you know, where you're going. That you don't, you know, ste you know, you try to use the sails more than the actual rudder. The same thing with investing is that, you know, a light touch on the portfolio is best if you have the right strategy and you don't have to intervene on a regular basis. And we view what's happening right now. We got a couple of phone calls at the end of June, people looking at their statements. Well, by the time they looked at their June statement and called or wanted a meeting or something, the balances were already back above where they were before. And people, you know, get concerned about uh, much to do about nothing. Well, the past year or so, what's happened is the continued low interest rates. We had the 10-year Treasury down about 1.4%. Uh, people started moving into riskier assets such as dividend paying stocks, you know, utility stocks, high yield bond, real estate investment trusts. Well, in May, when Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke announced that he may begin ending the bond buying program known as quantitative easing, it caused a sell off in anything interest rate sensitive, anything that was sensitive to interest rate, including all those high yielding investments and treasuries. Um, all asset class in the second quarter except U.S. large company had negative returns. As we look at this, um, international developed stocks down 1.6, emerging stocks down 8 percent, global real estate down 4, U.S. bond market down 2, and a global bond market down minus 1.7. Within that tips, Treasury inflation protected securities were, were hurt a lot. Let me see, I have that figure here. Um, TIPS uh, lost about 7% of their value in the second quarter. So you can see it was a rough quarter for a lot of asset classes, but like everything, most of it was overdone, and we saw a big rally in all those asset classes uh, in the beginning of July. When you design your portfolio, you want to try to design it for multiple economic scenarios. There's a um, you know, we have a way of constructing portfolios as sort of an all-weather type for portfolio. You have high growth rate periods, you have low growth rate periods, you have high inflationary times, and you have low or modest inflationary times. And if you put those all in sort of a matrix, you get a certain number of combinations. You could have high growth with low inflation, sort of the Goldilocks scenario. You could have low growth with high inflation, which is just, you know, the worst. And, and the different combinations. And so you want a portfolio that can continue to return uh, in all of those environments. Well, we're coming up on our first break. When we come back, we'll continue talking about what happened in the second quarter, as well as how to design a portfolio to uh, achieve your goals no matter what the scenario happens to be.